Hi there and welcome to the video. So today I'm going to show you how I got to the nice glass crystal strawberry that you saw in the thumbnail, uh, which is quite far away from what we're seeing on the screen at the moment, but I got there in a super easy way and I'll show you how. So I'm using HiDream here and I'm using this on the DrawThings platform, which is an Apple Mac only um, AI platform that can run sort of stable diffusion based um, models, it can run flux, it can run video models, lots of other things. I've done a beginner's tutorial on this so I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to go check them out. I'll also put a link to their Discord server because it is incredibly useful if you want to go there and ask any questions and check it out. It's not too busy that you'll never get heard and the people that develop the software um, they're just so helpful so I'd check that out but for now I'm just going to run through the basic settings that I started with at least these will change depending on what I've done to the individual images but model I've got high dream L1 I've got the full um, high dream model here it's giving the most quality and also flexibility of um, guidance levels and things no Laura's, nothing like that. I'm going to go straight down to image size. I've done these based on a 3 by 2 aspect ratio on like the preset normal resolution, which is a 1152 by 768 I sometimes go large. I can't remember if I did on this. Um, but I generally stay with those kind of aspect ratios, 3 by 2 2 by 3 Just a habit, not for any technical reason. It's just what I like. Steps 40. You probably don't need to go that high for an image like this. Sort of 30 to 35 is probably okay, but... Uh, that's what I had. Text guidance 3, that's my default start for any image and then I adjust it either upwards or downwards depending on the results I get and where I think I want to go with it. Sampler, DPM++ 2M AYS. You don't need to know what that means because I don't really even know what that means to be honest. All that I know is in all my experimentation that's the sampler that um, works best for, in my opinion in um, High Dream so that's what I use. Resolution dependent shift. This will be on by default. Um, I had it turned off because I've been playing a little bit with the shift value, but don't worry about that for now. It's not going to make um, it's not going to make or break your images. It's more of a sort of advanced tweaking kind of a setting, and that's the main. That's the basic settings. So the image here I started out. You can see my prompt at the top. Very simple. Close up macro photo of a beautiful, a beautiful or a realistic glass strawberry on a dark wooden chopping board. Obviously the glass cutting ASMR AI videos are really popular at the moment and I didn't want to do one actually being chopped but I just thought it was quite a good idea to play with just from a visual point of view. Um, so I thought I always start off with a very basic prompt like this and then build up on it and you don't have to get complicated with prompts in High Dream, Flux, any models like that. They can take large complicated prompts because of the um, because of the um, you know the mod the the technology kind of behind it the the language models and things like that but you don't have to you can get great results with very simple straightforward prompts so i ran this and it gave me a very normal looking but very nice looking strawberry so doesn't look like it's made of glass so i thought okay let's try something else i'll make a change i probably should have ran more than just one so this time i kept everything the same but i moved the text guidance value up from three to seven which is higher than I would normally go for anything personally, but I just sometimes I like to go more of the extreme just to see if the change I'm doing is going to push it in the right direction. So by moving the text guidance value up, it's basically um, it's telling it's telling the model that I want you to follow my text prompt more literally, but it's sort of at the detriment of um, of the more realistic sort of look. So I push this up and realise that okay, I'm getting a glass like look here. So a higher, a higher guidance value is give, pushing me in the direction I want. But I don't want to go higher than this on the um, text guidance because it'll start to look cartoony and, and illustrator, you know, illustrative. Sorry. So I thought, okay, what am I going to do next? So in the next one, I changed the prompt. So we kept all the other settings the same. And I thought, how can I describe more something that's made of glass? So I've got, I've inserted the words faceted gemstone glass strawberry. And just those terms there has given me that, which obviously now is starting to look more like what we want. It's almost like a jewel, um, like a crystal kind of strawberry. So this is going in the direction we want. So then this was just a variation. This was just a second generation with exactly the same settings. I normally do like two or three for each prompt I tweak, sometimes more, depends. And I just thought, okay, so I like where this is going, but I want to add a little bit more to the scene. So now I changed it again and I added 
with a Japanese knife laying alongside. And I also added, the glass is sparkling and there are strong caustics in the scene. Now caustics are these kind of reflections of colour that you get shining through glass onto surfaces. Or you get them on like the top of, of swimming pools and where the water reflects, sorry, the light reflects the top of the water and causes all those patterns on the bottom of a swimming pool. That's like um, caustic light effects as well. So I just added that and I did drop the guidance actually back down sort of five, so somewhere between the original three and the seven, just to kind of push it away from that slightly faked look and just keep the textures looking a bit more realistic. So that one came out, yeah, well I wasn't really keen on it, but I ran another one and... Um, I really love this shot. There's quite a few shots here that I, I like and I didn't put on the thumbnail, but I could have easily settled for them. And this is one. I really liked how this came out. It was clean and sharp. And you've got like the little seeds as indents in the crystal, but it still looks like a crystal or a glass object. Now there's a knife. The reason I put a Japanese knife was for no specific reason other than I thought it might make an interesting looking knife. So, um, and it has. So that's a goal. So I think this next one was just another one from the same. Same values again, just another generation. What have I changed on this one? See, sometimes I don't I don't realise if I've changed anything or not when I'm talking, and let's click through them. Nope, again, just another variation on the theme. I do this when I start to get more confident that I'm in the direction that I like. I will start to generate more um, variants, um, you know, with a, before I tweak something. And so this one here... The jump here was, what did I change? What did I change? Nothing again, nothing again. I just ran more. Obviously really like the concept. Now this one's really interesting because it's got these sort of small little crystals coming off that almost look like they're supposed to represent like water droplets, um, which is which is really nice. And then I started to get those on the next on the next kind of generation as well. And I just think that adds a lovely bit of interest to the image. And this is really nice now. And when I get to the point where I think I'm happy with an image or a little project, this one was quite simple. I didn't do many variations, as you can see. When I think, okay, that's it, I'm happy, I'm done, um, I just like to throw another idea into it just to see. Um, so I changed the prompt now completely, apart from the description of the strawberry itself and I did on a folded black silk surface low-key studio lighting I just thought it might be quite nice to have um, the strawberry crystal kind of isolated on a simpler background but still with some nice texture and this folded kind of silk effect can be can be really nice one thing I don't like about this version is how the little golden or yellow seeds they kind of stop halfway down and then they kind of disappear. It would have been nice if they were all not there, if none of them were there or all of them were there. Obviously, if I really like this shot and I wanted to use it for anything, I'd just take this into Photoshop and, you know, fix it that way in a couple of minutes, but it's fine for that. And then I did another one here, but I actually put the gold seeds into the prompt to try and encourage them to appear. And it did, and it actually made them larger and um, actually more like sort of studs you would see on um, an item of jewellery or um, a brooch or something or some kind of jewellery item like that so ran another one and I got more gold seeds so this is nice not quite as keen on the background here on this one and you can see on both of these there's a little bit of um let's bring up that one when I've put gold where I've mentioned gold for these seeds it's bringing a little bit of gold onto the green of the leaves there it's kind of um, which you might like, you might not. I would probably, again, if I wanted to go with this image as a final image to use for anything specific, I would probably take this into a photo editor and I would just get rid of the gold on the leaves just to make it a nice crisp, like two different colours. And I would probably deepen the, um, deepen the red colour on this a bit. But for now, that's, um, so that's the variations that I did on this image. Very simple. As you can see, I started off with a really simple prompt. And I ended up with the prompt that was hardly, hardly any more complex. But this is the best thing about using images, um, sorry, models like Hydream and Flux and things like that. You can get very good results by just knowing what to have in your scene and prompting for it. And I just like the, I just like to roll the dice a bit. I don't, I tend not to get a little too much into, um, 
things like um, control net equivalents to kind of position props in the scene specifically. If I was doing work for a client and it, they had a very specific thing, then yeah, obviously we, you'd go down that route um, and use references and things like that. But for when I'm just experimenting with an idea, I just like to get in the ballpark and just roll the dice and just let, um, let the model come up with some new and exciting angles and compositions of its own.